Welcome to the Introduction to Proclamation 2024 webinar. Uh, we are so happy you're here to join us today. We're recording this session. We will post it to the TEA website and share the recording out with everyone that registered today. My name is Janet Warren. I'm the Review and Adoption Coordinator for the Instructional Materials and Implementation Division. Uh, my job at the agency is to assist publishers that are going through the, um, the State Board of Education's review and adoption process and to work with the state review panels as they review the materials for standard alignment coverage. I'm going to let the rest of my team introduce themselves. Amy, we'll start with you. Thanks, Janet, and welcome to everybody who's joining us today. It looks like we have a big group, so I'm excited about that. My name is Amy Williams. I'm the Director of Instructional Materials Review and Procurement here at TEA. Um, Janet, Cassie, and Alex will share what they do in their roles. And I'll also just note that I um, also manage the Texas Resource Review process. So that's the quality review of instructional materials. Once again, this, record, this will be recorded and shared out with everyone, and I will be assisting Janet in the chat. So feel free to pop any questions you have in the chat along the way. I always forget to unmute myself. Hello, everybody. I am Cassandra Pinato. Everyone calls me Cassie. Feel free to do that. I am a review and adoption specialist in review and adoption and procurement um, unit under Amy and Janet is my coordinator. I am um, responsible for facilitating the standards alignment um, review part of the SBOE process. Hand it over um, to Alex. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Alejandro Perez. Uh, I'm a procurement specialist on the instructional materials team with Amy, Janet, and Cassie. Um, I mainly work in EMAT, that's TEA's um, online instructional materials ordering system, mainly with districts, uh, but I help out wherever it's needed. So good to see everyone. Thank you all. Well, we're going to start today with a poll question. I'm going to launch the poll. So uh, we want to know who is in the audience. Please select your affiliation from the list. Okay, we're going to close our polling in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, share results. It looks like the majority of our audience today is uh, from publishers or content providers. And that's great because that's really what our main focus for this is. Everyone can learn something from it, but we really are intending a lot of this information for publishers that are interested in participating. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. And we're going to go to our next poll question. Okay, so if you are representing a publishing company, what is your role? Okay. Going to close the poll in five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Looks like we have a mix of everyone from the publishing world, uh, which is also good because it takes everyone from the publishing group to get through this process. I'm going to stop sharing those results. And we're going to go to the next poll question. If you are from, uh, represent a district or campus, what is your role? Please select from the list below. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to end the 
pulling in five, four, three, two, one. Share the results. Looks like the majority are from the department head or curriculum specialist. And then we'll go to our next poll question. If you are not a rep, uh, if you do not represent a district campus or publisher, what is your affiliation? Please select from the list. Okay, I'm gonna end the polling in five, four, three, two, one. Show results. Looks like we have a mix of private sector, education service center, and other. Well, thank you all for being here today. So today I'll provide a high level overview of the components of the proclamation to deepen your understanding of the adoption requirements and overall timeline to help inform your decision uh, to participate in the Texas adoption. As Amy said, please put in questions in the chat uh, if you have any questions and Cassandra will be adding links into the chat um, as we go through different parts of it. And like I said, the recording is going to be shared out. I'll also create a PDF of the slides and share those out with the recording. Um, today, I will not be covering any subject specific information, such as the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills, the English Language Proficiency Standards, the STAR test, or the quality review. We will host subject specific webinars in July and August to cover these topics in depth. Okay, I have a new poll question. Have you participated in a previous proclamation? Okay, I'm gonna close the polling in five, four, three, two, one. Wow, we have a 50-50 split. Let me share the results. We have a 50-50 split of uh, people that have participated and not participated. So thank you all for being here today. Okay, and for those of you that have participated before, um, if you have participated in a recent adoption, which of the proclamations have you submitted materials for? You can select all that apply. I'm gonna close the polling in five, four, three, two, one. It looks like we have publishers that have participated in all of the proclamations that we have uh, recently had. Okay, stop sharing those results. And then our last poll question. Uh, for which subject areas are you considering submitting materials? Select all that apply. Okay, I'm gonna close the poll in five, four, three, two, one. Okay, it looks
looks like the majority are for science and we have some in every area, which is great. Okay, the proclamation is divided into seven sections and I'm gonna spend some time highlighting the key components of each section. It's very important that you read every page of the proclamation. Don't just skim through it. Even the glossary contains helpful information. The introduction contains three major pieces of information. This is where you will find the list of courses and grade levels included in the call, an overview of the adoption requirements, and information about the types of acceptable submissions. Uh, this proclamation calls for instruction materials in K through 12 for science, the new social studies course, personal financial literacy and economics, K through eight technology applications, and CTE courses from education and training, health science, hospitality and tourism, law and public service, STEM, and energy. We added a single asterisk to the CTE courses for which students will earn science credit. That's important because those courses will uh, be required to cover the ELPS. We added two asterisks for any course that had TEKS adopted this month. And that's important because those courses will have different due dates for a few of the deliverables. There are six main criteria that a product must meet in order to be available for adoption in Texas. Products must meet at least 50% of the TEKS uh, in the student and teacher material and 100% of the applicable ELPS. Uh, for this proclamation, products are only required to cover the ELPS if they are intended for science or a CTE course that can be used to satisfy high school graduation requirement uh, for a foundation subject area. Uh, products must be suitable for the subject area and grade level. Uh, they must be uh, reviewed by academic experts, comply with applicable manufacturing standards, and be free from factual error. While many of you may intend on developing a new product that aligns to the TEKS, that's not the only submission option. You may also submit existing materials if you can demonstrate alignment to the TEKS, or you can submit OER materials. You'll find a full adoption timeline on pages uh, seven to 17, uh, but I've highlighted some key dates here. We will release the publisher handbook, which provides detailed information about each deliverable this summer. And then the State Board of Education will issue their question and answer document at their next meeting. On the next several slides, I'll discuss the first few deliverables required for um, publishers. All publishers must file their official intent to participate in the proclamation by December 5th, 2022. Publishers with materials for courses with TEKS adopted by April of 2022 will have three deadlines between January 9th, 2023 and April 3rd of 2023. Publishers with materials for courses with TEKS adopted by June of 2022 will have three deadlines between April 10th of 2023 and June 26th of 2023. Um, all materials will be reviewed for the standards alignment in the summer of 2023, and the SBOE will take an, um, an adoption vote in November of 2023. You'll find detailed information regarding the deliverables and other requirements on pages 18 to 27 of the proclamation. The information in this section is organized alphabetically, not in the order that it is due. And it provides more detail regarding the items in the adoption timeline and includes rule reference when appropriate. All materials, regardless of their format, must be fully accessible to students with disabilities. If you publish digital materials, all teachers and student components must comply with the web content um, accessibility guidelines, version 2.1 AA, and the technical standards required for the Federal Rehabilitation Act, section 508. 
If you publish print materials, you must provide electronic NIMAS files for all student components and pages in the teacher components that are intended for the student use um, to facilitate the production of Braille, large print, and audio versions of those materials. You should mark your calendars for December 5th, 2022. This is the first publisher deadline in the proclamation. The statement of intent to bid is the publisher's official declaration of intent to submit materials for adoption. The statement of intent to bid must be submitted for each product in each course or grade level in which you intend to submit materials. It requires basic information about the submission, such as the program title, estimated TEKS percentage, media format, and system requirements. Um, a publisher that does not submit a statement of intent to bid by the deadline is not eligible to participate in the process. And we will provide additional training about how to submit this deliverable in the fall. We ask that publishers use a specific process to, to demonstrate where in their materials they will align to the TEKS and the ELPS. We have developed a web-based application called the Standards Alignment Dashboard that you will use for this purpose. When you identify a single piece of content that covers a standard, uh, it is called a citation. A complete collection of citations for a specific grade level or course is called correlations. You will be granted access to the standards alignment dashboard to begin working on your correlations after you submit your statement of intent to bid. It can take several months to complete correlations, so it's crucial that you allocate sufficient time to complete that work. We ask that publishers, uh, we ask publishers to submit preliminary correlations early on in the process. This provides us an opportunity to review a small sample of your correlations and provide feedback for improvement. So preliminary correlations uh, are due on January 9th, 2023. And if you have um, uh, preliminary correlations for courses with TEKS adopted in June of 2022 are not due until April 10th of 2023. Then publishers will use that feedback provided from the preliminary correlations to complete the remaining correlations. These correlations are used by the state review panels as their primary resource for determining uh, TEKS coverage. The final correlation should be carefully chosen and constructed and very clear. So the final correlations are due April 3rd, 2023 and the final correlations for courses with TEKS adopted in June of 2022 are not due until June 26, 2023. Um, the complete descriptions provides a little bit more detail than the statement of intent to bid. Um, it provides detail about the components that will be used to verify TEKS coverage. The complete description must be submitted for each product in each course or grade level. Uh, complete descriptions are required for each media format. Um, it does require more detailed information about the submission, such as the program and component title and ISBNs, preliminary price for each component, the number of print pages intended for the student use, and the system requirements for all digital components. So the complete descriptions are due on March the 6th, 2023, and then complete descriptions for courses with TEKS adopted in June of 2022 are not due until May 30th, 2023. The pre-adoption sample is your fully developed product that will be used by the reviewers to determine standard alignment coverage. Uh, the pre-adoption samples are due at the same time as the complete descriptions are due. So that is um, uh, March the 6th, 2023, or for products uh, or for courses that were uh, with TEKS adopted in June 2022, it's not until May 30th, 2023. The pre adoption samples must be complete electronic versions of the final product and must include all com content, components, and features intended to be in the final product not just the content identified in the correlations. 
For example, that would be all the student and teacher materials, any diagnostic tools, test banks, et cetera. The pre-adoption samples will be posted to the TEA website for public review. The original pre-adoption samples must remain available and unchanged until the final post-adoption samples are submitted in March of 2024. And all edits made after pre-adoption sample is submitted must be carefully tracked. Uh, prior to the pre-adoption sample deadline, the fully developed product must go through a thorough editorial review. The certification of editorial review is due at the same time as the pre-adoption sample. Conducting the review prior to submitting the pre-adoption sample will minimize any changes needed to the product throughout the review process. And electronic samples must be free of sales and marketing materials. It must allow for multiple simultaneous user access, must be equipped with a word search feature, and contain embedded correlations that direct users to the content cited for standards alignment. Um, there are a few other requirements that I'll point out on this slide. And you'll remember, you'll find the full list of deliverables and other requirements on pages 18 to 27 of the proclamation. So print materials must comply with the specifications of the manufacturing standards and specifications for textbooks or the MSST. Machine readable TEKS must be used to tag content in digital materials. Uh, let's see, you must document all contact with the SBOE during the adoption process. Very specific procedures must be followed before making any content changes. And adopted publishers must agree to an eight-year contract with a possible four-year renewal. You'll find the TEKS in course enrollment on pages 29 to 32 of the proclamation. So the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills are the currently adopted standards. The course enrollments are from the 2020-2021 school year. And we will update the links to the new TEKS once they are adopted. And we'll update the course enrollments um, when the 2021-2022 numbers are released. So we'll update that in the proclamation. Next, we're gonna talk about the glossary. Um, you'll find the glossary on pages 34 to 39 of the proclamation. You'll wanna read all of it, and um, it'll help you to understand the meaning of proclamation specific terms. We're gonna talk about standards alignment. It's important that you fully understand how to demonstrate alignment to the standards. You will need to watch the standards alignment training and ask questions. I'll show you how to get to the training in the next steps question, uh, section. We will provide specific information about the TEKS and the breakouts during the subject specific webinars in July and August. And the standards alignment dashboard training will be provided to participating publishers after the statement of intent to bid is submitted. Okay. Next steps. You'll need to carefully read the proclamation. You'll need to read um, the Texas Administrative Code Chapter 66 and Texas Education Code Chapter 31. And you'll want to watch the Publisher Orange Orientation tra uh, Series training videos on the TEA website. Let me show you how to get to those real quick. Are you able to see my the TEA website? Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. So from the TEA website, you're going to um, hover over the Academics tab and go to the Instructional Materials page. You're going to scroll down and look at this section that says, View Adoption Resources for Publishers. The training videos are at the top. The ones you'll want to view are these first three training videos here. Um, the Instructional Materials Basics, 
the term determining alignment and accessibility requirements. Uh, we'll end up talking more about complete description training and statement of intent to bid training a little bit later in the process. And then it's not there yet, but we'll be adding a section that says Proclamation 2024. We'll link to the proclamation there. It's already on the website, but we'll link to it here as well. And like you see here on Proclamation 2022, we'll add the publisher handbook once it's been released and the Proclamation 2024 questions and answers once that has been um, to the board in September. We'll also show you, if I go back to this instructional materials page, there is a link to the proclamation in the announcements section as well. Okay. You're going to want to register to attend the subject specific webinars. Um, we don't have the registrations links yet, uh, but we will email those out to everyone that's registered for this webinar. And then the links will also uh, be sent through a review and adoption will serve. You'll want to submit any Proclamation 2024 questions to the Instruction Materials and Implementation Help Desk. And if you're not already signed up for the review and adoption listserv, you'll want to do that because we send out a lot of information throughout the whole proclamation process through that listserv. So TEA will present the Proclamation 2024 questions and answers document to the SBOE in September of 2022. Uh, the Q&A is used to provide official direction and clarification by the State Board. Um, so if there are specific questions you have or if you need further clarification on any requirement, you'll want to submit them to TEA no later than July 31st, 2022. And you'll want to submit those through the Instruction Materials and Implementation Help Desk. Then um, we really appreciate you attending today. Here's another link to the Help Desk to submit any questions. We always welcome your feedback. And so we'd like you to complete the exit ticket prior to, uh, after the, the session has ended to provide us some feedback. And I will um, stop sharing and open it up for questions. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat or you can come off mute and share your question. And it, I'm going to um, ask just two questions that were directly sent to me and asked. Mm -hmm. And um, it's good questions. It's about the live review that we're um, hoping to do that summer. Um, so one of them is, are they required to submit any print samples to the reviewers when we are requiring digital samples as their pre-adoption samples? The answer to that is on page 24, I believe of the proclamation, but it does state that um, that uh, all publishers participating are to submit digital samples to TEA and all of the 20 ESCs, but, um, and then if required by the SBOE members, then they would ship samples to them, but samples provided to the reviewers may be print or electronic. And if you do print, um, we will have a room set up for you with your own table that you could set up your materials on. And then staff, when um, the reviewers start reviewing your materials, we will take that out to them. No displays would be set up, nothing like that, because they're not going to see that. So um, those were the questions that were asked. Thank you, Cassie. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Christine Abshire from a uh, publisher. And this is my first time. So this may be a question that everyone else knows the answer to. Um, but is the web-based dashboard to submit correlations uh, something new or has that been done in the past? 
Um, it's a relatively new process. Um, we used it in Proclamation 2022. That was the first time we've used uh, the, the standards alignment dashboard. Um, so it's, it's new for most publishers unless you participated in that proclamation. Okay, thanks. Okay, any other questions? I have a question about translation. We are planning on submitting just our English uh, product. If we were to offer translation later, does that translation have to be complete for the May, I'm sorry, the March 6th submission? Yes, all the pre-adoption samples will need to be complete, uh, complete at the pre-adoption sample time. In the event that you don't have the translations completed, you would have to follow our update process because all content that you intend to have in your materials needs to be available during the public review period. Thank you. Uh, I see a question in the chat to please confirm that access to the dashboard won't be available until after the intent to bid and then preliminary correlations will be due on January 9th. The answer to the first part of the question is correct. Um, what we have to do on our end is set up EMAP to receive statements of intent to bid. As soon as we've done that, we will send out notice. The second thing we have to do is get the breakouts entered into the standards alignment dashboard so that we can give you access to uh, those to build your correlations. And so we're, uh, I had put a message in the chat that for those April courses, we're trying to get that done over the next few weeks, but for the courses that were adopted in June, we're looking at the next couple months. That being said, once all those pieces are in line and you've submitted a statement of intent to bid, you'll be granted access to the dashboard. And we will have a fall webinar that goes over submitting statements of intent to bid. And with that, will we get access to what the template looks like? Cause that way our team could build it in Excel or Google Sheets so that when you do release the final correlation online document, we'll, we'll have our things already built. Cause obviously with thousands of or hundreds of line items, it would be nice for us to lean forward and we have months and months to link every, uh, uh, citation. If we know what the template's going to look like, even though maybe it's not finalized on your end to look to know what the look and feel of of the format would be to when we get access. Yes, it will go into during the subject specific um, sessions. We will uh, show you images of the dashboard and what it looks like in there. Thank you. A couple questions that might be easier to answer out loud. Um, there is one regarding hardware and whether or not you have to provide hardware to the ESCs for viewing your samples if it's a web-based product. The only thing I'll say to that is if for some reason your materials might require headphones or something like that to, to fully have the experience. And if for some reason the ESC does not already have those types of accessories, then yes, you would be asked to provide hardware. Um, for the actual state review panel meetings, we highly recommend if you have any kind of audio that you do provide headphones for the reviewers, because you can imagine in a big ballroom with hundreds of people reviewing different things, it can get quite loud. Uh, somebody asked if the attendees of this meeting will be automatically sent invitations to future webinars. Yes. We will also put notice in the content specific gov delivery messages as well as our review and adoption um, listserv. There's a questions about uh, specific LMS requirements for ebook resources that support hardback textbooks. The only specific requirements we have related to digital materials are those that you can find in the proclamation related to accessibility use of machine readable teaks, things of that nature. And somebody asked, 
when will the curriculum requirements be made public for the financial literacy curriculum? I dropped links into the chat of what was presented to the state board at their June meeting for all of the TEKS that were adopted in June. So that's CTE, Tech Apps, and the Econ and PFL course. The only thing I'll mention is that any amendments that they made at the June meeting will not be reflected in what you see in this uh, chat. So the final version has to go through rulemaking edits and then is sent to the Texas Register and will ultimately get posted to the TEA site. And then somebody asked if preliminary correlations are to be done in the dashboard and the answer is yes. Um, somebody asked about submitting the statement of intent to bid early. Yes, it does. You do not have to wait until that December 5th deadline. Like uh, Amy had said earlier, we have a few action items we need to take care of, and we'll let you know when the statement of intent to bid is ready for you to start submitting. Somebody asked about the computer science standards. You can find those in um, the link that I added to the chat for CTE. That was part of the STEM subsection or subchapter O. So the, the TEKS as presented to the board in June are included in the chat. Oh, yeah, I did mention a ballroom. It is the plan to do an in-person review for Proclamation 20. 24, barring any uh, national pandemics. Somebody had asked if we can share, sh share, share the chat. And I think we can download a copy of the chat and include that transcript in what we send out to everybody. We also have a question about academic expert review requirement. Um, basically, that requirement is on us. We at TEA facilitate the state board's review process. And part of that means that we need to assemble panels that include folks who meet the board's definition of academic expert. So we will ensure that we have academic experts on hand to review your materials. And yes, we can post a link to this Zoom as well as a link to the slides on the publisher resources page. So Amy, just to clarify, the rubric for science will be ready sometime this summer. Yes, I've been working with the internal team who's responsible for drafting that initial rubric. And as of Friday, it was just undergoing some copy editing. The next steps there are that we need to run it through uh, leadership on our end. And then we're going to start taking it out into the field to solicit input. So we at least have, you know, the framework for the rubric that we'll be able to share with everyone. Of course, it does go through some uh, you know, iterations along the way, but you'll at least have access to uh, the starting point. And then uh, once we get it to a place where everybody feels pretty good about it, we stop iterating and just post it for public comment for 30 days and then finalize the full rubric. So I'm not expecting that we'll have the final, final rubric until August, but you'll at least be able to get your hands on a, an early draft. Okay, and that'll be on the TEA website. It'll actually be on the TRR website. Okay. Thank you. Of course. Amy, there's a question about, does tracking communication begin when the pre-adoption samples are submitted or before? Tracking communication with the SBOE? With the SBOE. Okay. Um, I don't think there's anything written in stone, but I would say I would treat it like we treat our state review panels and say you need to start tracking it once you've submitted your statement of intent to bid.
And correct me if I'm wrong, team, I believe that that form is already available on the publisher resources page in the required forms PDF. I don't think it's proclamation specific. Um, I'll need to check, but I think it is. Sorry, what form was that? I have it open. The tracking um, communication with the state board members. Um, Haley asked a question. We are uh, trying to get the science breakouts released in the next few weeks. Those have made it farthest along in the process. Yes, the register of contact is listed on the required proclamation forms. We asked a question about the dimensions of the space that they'll have to store or display samples um, for, let me see, at the ESCs. So typically what happens at the ESCs, um, in fact, you will not give ESCs hard copy samples. You're required to give them just digital access so that if someone in the public wants to view the materials and doesn't have the equipment at home to view them, they can go into the ESC. TEA for the past several years has posted access online to everyone's submissions, so it's no longer necessary to take a physical trip into ESCs. That being said, I know that ESCs host adoption conferences at which you will be invited to come set up displays. I can't speak to dimensions or requirements for those, but what I can tell you is that we collect from the ESCs a list of dates and for those um, road shows and contact folks. So you'll be able to ask those questions directly of the ESCs. Amy, the link, I might have picked the wrong link, but the link for the CTE TEKS, I think, is actually the checkouts TEKS. Unless you've added a second one. I'll take a look. Um, a previous questions and answers document established that publishers were not required to print the text of the TEKS in the student facing materials. However, are we expected to print? I keep losing the question. Let me make it bigger. Numbers and letters of the knowledge and skills, student expectations and the breakouts. I can say that um, your students don't um, probably don't care much about the numbers and letters of the student expectations and knowledge and skills statements. I know that it is helpful to teachers. That being said, there is no requirement anywhere for you to label things in print with their associated TEKS numbers and letters. That can just be a, uh, a field preference driven decision. Um, a question about can someone share which courses were adopted in April and which were adopted this month. If you look in the introduction section of the proclamation where it lists all of the courses, any course with two asterisks are those that were adopted in June. All others were adopted in April. Or prior to April for some of the high school science courses. I'm going to open the link um, that they have posted on the SBOE page and see if it's just linking to the wrong thing. Nope, that's it. Here is the 
link to the STEM courses that include computer science. At this point, if you have any other questions, feel free to take yourself off mute and just ask them out loud, or you can drop them in the chat. Otherwise, we will be able to give you back some time in your day. There's a message in the chat of where can we see uh, which materials from the past proclamations were purchased via EMAT? Um, are those reports available? Um, we do have reports on the TEA website of what is currently being purchased. Uh, the historical reports are not available on the TEA website um, at this point in time. How can someone get those if they want them? If you need historical documents uh, about ordering, you can submit a, a, a PIR. I was trying to find the link for that real quick. We'll talk about TRR, Kim, at the science specific webinar in July. Can, it, can you drop again the dates or maybe go back to that slide that shows the dates for the subject specific webinars? Yes. And I'm adding to the chat the link to submit the PIR. There's a question about what type of samples could the SBOE members or the districts request, and it could be print or digital. It's whichever they request. Also a question about if publisher or TEA bears the cost of producing the final Braille files. The publisher must produce the NIMAS files, but then once you give those to us, we pay using federal monies to produce the Braille master and any copies that are ordered by districts as well as the large print and audio. So you don't have to worry about making the materials, you just have to give us the information so that we can do it. Yes, and with the NIMAS files, you also uh, provide a high quality PDF. And that's listed in the proclamation. Can you see the screen? A bit of clarification okay. on that, um, the response that was just given about um, these state board members requesting samples. So if we produce and provide a digital product, we would then have to produce something in print, a print version for them? You only have to give them a print version if a print version is something that you are selling. So it could be a supplemental print that they would wanna see the core product being digital and a supplemental print version of the same thing that's online. Sometimes board one. members just prefer a hard copy. And so they did put it in their rule that if they request a print version of a print product, then publishers have to supply them with a print version. A lot of times they're uh, perfectly fine receiving digital access, but it's, it's in their rule. So it's something that we always share. For districts, you have to provide them with digital access in the pre-adoption sample period you may, if you choose to, provide them with a digital, I mean, with a print version. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. For these subject specific webinars, is it gonna be about an hour as well and at the same time or are they longer sessions? 
The subject specific webinars may be longer. Um, I the science one for, will for sure be longer because we'll have um, we'll have other teams uh, in the agency uh, presenting as well. Our curriculum department and our division and our assessment division will be providing some information. Um, the career and technical education, tech apps, and personal financial literacy, uh, I would expect to be between an hour to two hours long. And then the science may be a little bit longer than that. And is the time available yet or is that to come? Uh, it's tentatively, I think they're all tentatively scheduled for about one o'clock in the afternoon, um, but that is still, it's not a for sure set in stone yet. Janet, can you pull up again the slide that has the uh, table of due dates? Yes. And while you're doing that, I'm going to answer a question that came in the chat to clarify the policy regarding updating content during the contract term after the instructional materials have been reviewed and adopted. Um, when you sign a contract with the agency and the state board for adopted materials, you are promising to never change content without previous permission. So then that permission is divided into two buckets. The first is a change to something that was not used as a citation and approved by the state review panel. So those are the easy changes. You have to go through a process to request permission. We have to post the change for a minimum of seven days for public review, and then TEA can approve those changes. If you wanna change something that was used as a citation that was reviewed and approved by the review teams, then you have to request the state board's permission. And so just depending on the timing of that request, we ha have to have time to get it on a board agenda. So it could take anywhere from uh, one to six months to get an approved request of that nature. If you wanna substitute a new addition, which is a, a more substantial change, then we have to post that for a minimum of 60 days, which means that uh, the timing of that to get it on an agenda and have had it posted for 60 days can sometimes push it out even further. Uh, somebody's asking about digital hands-on learning activities. If the activities are digital, we won't be making braille versions, but instead they would need to meet the web content accessibility guidelines and section 508 standards. If I could circle back to the response you just gave about the content not changing. Yes. So I understand that the final content and the complete versions of the program are required for pre-adoption samples. So does that mean that our functionality on our site can't change until the post-adoption samples? For instance, if there's a functionality of a planner, a lesson planner or something like that, that doesn't affect the content, we can update our, our functionality as long as it doesn't change our citations or our content, correct? That one's a little tricky to answer because if you look at the letter of the, of the rule, it says it needs to be fully functional and contain all features and content that is going to be in the final version. So if you were to interpret that very literally, it would mean it needs to be ready to go. That being said, it does allow for some technical enhancements, although the technical enhancements that are allowed versus uh, you know, fully functioning is not defined. So that's something that we have received questions about and intend to seek clarification from the SBOE regarding when we give them the questions and answers to consider at the end of August. Much appreciated, thank you. Can you clarify for me, it says May 30th is the pre-adoption sample dates um, for any TEKS adopted in June, which there's several of those that have the double asterisk indicating they were adopted in June. However, in the proclamation, it only mentions tech apps on that May 30th deadline. So for the, it does in the proclamation only mention tech apps, but 
Um, the draft of the proclamation uh, happened prior to uh, some of those courses being added. And so it will be, it, it is for anything ad uh, adopted in June of 2022. So the first set of deadlines is for any courses that were adopted in April of 2022 or prior to April of 2022. And the second set okay. is for anything adopted in June of 2022. Okay, so, and those are double asterisks that have the June of 2022. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. And the TEKS that were adopted in April, are they on the normal Texas TEKS page? Um, I know the science has been updated, so it, we need to add that to the proclamation. Um, but I haven't checked on some of the other ones. Uh, if if they were previously there uh, before April, they're linked in the in the proclamation. If they're not, we'll add them to the proclamation when uh, they're available. Okay, because we've had been having a hard time finding some of the teaks that we need, so. And Amy shared the links of those uh, draft versions from the June. Yeah. Just be really careful when you're looking at the um, the TEKS that have been posted to the website because districts are still required to be teaching the current TEKS, not those that were adopted mm -hmm. in 2021 or 2022. So you'll see both sets. Okay. And uh, we'll update the links in the proclamation if and when they get finalized and posted to the TEKS pages. So we can do that for science. And uh, I know we can do that for some of the CTE courses. I've seen the two versions on there. Just be extra careful that you're always looking at the ones that were adopted in 2021 or 2022. Okay, and I got the link that you, you gave for the, 20, the June adopted TEKS. Is there a similar link for the April adopted TEKS? Well, that link that I was providing is actually to the attachment for the SBOE meeting. So that's a different kind of link. I just posted in the chat a link to the uh, chapter 112, which houses all of science. And it'll take a little bit longer to dig out the CTE link since they live in different subchapters, but we can make sure that anything that has been posted is included in the communication we send out following this webinar. Okay, great, because CT is the one that I am interested in, so thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic, I know that I've seen some of the CTE ones in there, so you uh, will be able to share that. Yeah. yeah, we're just, it's always confusing. Are these drafts, are these the official final ones that we need to use, are these? So yes, yep. just wanna make sure we're using the correct ones so that we can do quality programs. Understood, I got a question in the chat about how are the science breakouts different than the published TEKS? In a lot of ways, they're not, but um, if you haven't already watched the standards alignment video that's on the publisher resources page, I encourage you to do that. It's going to clarify what we mean by breakouts. Essentially, we just take the language of the student expectations and we break that out into its component parts. So if it's a list of things, like if it's a list of three things, this, this, and this, then we're going to make three different breakouts so that we can ensure that instructional materials cover every aspect of a student expectation. Okay, well, it looks like we are at three o'clock. And so if we don't have any additional questions, uh, we will close out this session. And I do see one additional question. Is it correct that personal finance is, own, is its own area, not part of CTE? So the personal finance and economics course is listed under the social studies standards. Um, so it is not part of CTE. And it was just a one-off course that was added to this proclamation uh, when the TEKS were just adopted in June. So we're gonna go ahead and close out this meeting. I'll stop the recording. Um, I won't share out the recording today. I will get it posted and then share links to the recording and provide the slides. 
and any of the other information we said we'd provide out today to everyone that was registered to for this webinar. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you all have a great afternoon. Please don't forget to fill out the exit tickets. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Cassie.